Today what we're going to do is we're going to start with a concept uh, called functions, which in my opinion is fairly simple, but a lot of beginners of Python have trouble with it. So basically how a function works is we input something and we get something out in return. So it's very simple, simple to the idea of a mathematical function where we have y equals x squared. We're putting in some value for x, right? So maybe you put in 5, 5 squared equals 25. So we get 25 as output. X is our input, Y is our output. We're inputting X and receiving Y as a result or output. So we have a concept that works the exact same in programming. So here's what a function looks like in uh, Python. So the point of a function right here is we could, we have this function called add two integers. That is the name of this function. So we can use add two integers, input some numbers, and then get a result back stored in the variable result. Okay, so in this case, we're creating a function using the keyword def. We have def, the name of the function, and then we have two values we can input. num1, which in this case will be 26, and num2, which in this case will be 31. Um, right here we're doing sum equals num1. This should actually be plus right here, but times num2 and then we're using the return statement to return the result, okay? And when we run this function here as so, our result gets stored in the variable result, which we can then print out. So let's go ahead and actually, let's look at this in Python. Let's run this code in Python and let's see how it works. So we have the keyword def, we have the name of our function, add two integers. We have num1, which is going to be the first number we can input into our function, num2 and num2. Then we have a colon. Then we have the code uh, for our function itself, sum equals, we're going to do it the right way, num1, um, which is just coming from right up here. We're using the, we're only using the variables we've created inside the function and those we have specified um, as input. So num1 plus num2. And then we're going to return. We're going to use the return keyword to return that sum. And notice all of the uh, all of the code inside the function is denoted by a tab. So all this is going to be indented right here. And then if you want to actually use this function, we'll have result equals add two integers, um, 26 and 31 is our input. So 26 is going to become num1, 31 is going to become num2. And then we're going to add those up using this code and return it, which means it's gonna be stored in result. So if we print result, we should get, uh, was that 57? So let's go ahead and let's run that code. Save it, run. And right here, actually right down here, we're gonna get 57, okay? If, you write, if we run it right up here, we should just be able to do Python and then main.py. Mm, okay, maybe it doesn't work out there. Uh, anyways, so we have main.py and a result, if you run it, was 57 right down here, okay? Um, so that is the idea of how a function works. Um, I would say that uh, oftentimes uh, new users of functions forget, forget the def keyword and they don't really understand the concept of this being the name of the function and this being the usage, but that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and let's actually look at a, another example. Um, so right here, so this is some, these are some of the, this is some of the terminology. We've kind of already gone over this. Um, right here we have def, so that's gonna be the def keyword. We've got the name of the function. We have these inputs. Before we call them inputs, but they can also be called parameters. Um, and right here we have a function that just actually uses the return statement and converts far to Kelvin. Um, and this is how it's used. So let's go ahead and let's just kind of write this code in Python and execute it, just to make sure we have a clear understanding. So we have our def keyword, we have far underscore to Kelvin, which is the name of the uh, function. We have a parameter temp. Now the intended behavior of this is that we can have like result, we can have converted, we can just call it converted result equals far to Kelvin, and then input some temperature, some Fahrenheit temperature to get the Kelvin result. So we're gonna have, in order to convert it, we can just say Kelvin equals temp. We'll call this far temp just to be clear. 
equals far temp uh, times or minus 32 um, times 5 divided by 9 uh, plus 273.15. If I'm not mistaken, like to convert to calculus would be, or sorry, to convert to Celsius would be the same thing, just without this. So, anyways, we can actually remove these parentheses right here, and then we would just return Kelvin. So that means that we would, uh, we can say we can return, we'll call this Kelvin temp, return Kelvin temp. So basically, what we can do is um, we will input the Fahrenheit temperature as 92. We will convert it, store the result in Kelvin temp, and then our converted result will be Kelvin temp. So we'll print out uh, converted result. And we'll go ahead and execute that. And right down here, we're going to get 306.4833. All right. I'm just going to zoom in on this. All right. Um, so we'll go ahead and clear this right here. But that's basically how that works. Now, the reason that we actually use functions to make it clear is so that we can um, repeatedly execute blocks of code without having to write them all out. So right here, for example, um, if we didn't have a function, we would have to run this line of code every single time, right? So we'd have to have something like that, um, right? And then if you want to convert another, another temperature, we'd have to have another line of code like that. Um, maybe for like 108 or something like that. And then we'd have another one. And it's kind of just like messy to write all this code. And maybe this might not seem that big of a problem, but when you have a function that has like six or seven lines of code that does some really complex operations, it can be really tedious. So instead of doing this, we can just do, we can just really simply do far Kelvin. Um, 92, far Kelvin uh, 108, and far Kelvin, uh, this one is far to Kelvin 291. And the other thing that's good about this is if we have some sort of syntax error, rather than having to look at three different lines of code, we can just look at one line of code and figure out where the problem is. Um, now, we inputted values here, but we could also do something like, we could say uh, Kelvin temp, or sorry, Fahrenheit temp, because we're converting from Fahrenheit to Kelvin. Uh, Kelvin, or Fahrenheit equals, um, we'll say float input enter Fahrenheit. We can get some user input, and then we can stick that in here. So this variable is just going to go right here. And we'll go ahead and we'll get rid of this for now. And so we can actually input a Fahrenheit. We can have our function convert that Fahrenheit value because whatever is right here will become far temp. And then we can print out the result. So we'll return it and then print out the result. So let's go ahead and run that. Let's type in 21. And then our, our uh, Kelvin result will be 267 point whatever, whatever. So um, that's that. Let's go ahead and let's do some like maybe slightly more um, complicated exercises. So right here what we're going to do is we're going to, we have the formula for calculating the area of a triangle, which is area equals one half base times height. So we're going to write a function called uh, triangle area that takes a triangle's base and height as input and returns the area as output. Um, and then once we've done this, we're going to test the function by calculating the area of a triangle with a base of 5 and a height of 20, and then print out the result, which should be 50. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Um, first, remember our function is named triangle area. So we're going to have def triangle underscore area. Okay. Um, and it says it takes the triangle's base and height as input. So these are going to be our parameters. All right. So we're going to have a parameter of base and height. Um, and we want to return the area. So we're going to say area equals the formula for calculating area is 1 half base times height. So we'll have, uh, we could just have 0 0.5 times base times height. And then we're going to return our area. Um, now, this is just going to be our function. What we want to do is we want to test the function 
by calculating the area of a triangle with a base of 5 and a height of 20. So we're going to use our function. We're going to say area equals triangle area. Remember, our base right here is 5, and our height is 20. So we're going to input 5 right here and 20 right here, and then we'll print the result, which will just be area. Let's go ahead and execute this. And we've got 50, which makes sense. Um, let's do one more exercise to kind of um, just give you a slightly more complex example with a different type of parameter, all right? So our next exercise right here, we're going to create an array of five integer elements. And then we're going to write a function named array sum that takes an array as input and returns the sum of all the elements of the array as output. So if your input is 3, 4, 1, 0, 1, then your function should return an output of 9. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So the first thing we need to do is create an array of five elements. So we'll just say uh, nums equals 23, 31, 45, 61, and 2. Um, so what we actually want to do, so we can actually go ahead, we'll just put this down here, and we will um, create a function called array sum. So it's going to have a name of array sum. So it's going to be uh, def array sum. And then we're going to give it a parameter. So we're going to have an array as input or an array as parameter. And we'll just call that array to add. Okay. Um, now, so the idea is whatever array, whatever is input right here, it's going to be some array. We want to find the sum of all the values in that array. So we're going to write some more code. We're going to do this kind of the long way. We'll say sum equals zero uh, for um, uh, i in. Uh, range len array to add. Um, then sum equals sum plus array to add i. Okay. And then we're going to return that sum once we've done that. So that's cool. We've written our function right up here. Um, now we're going to execute our function using this array that we've created. Um, and we're going to say uh, sum of array, sum of nums equals uh, array sum. And then we're just going to stick nums in there. So up until now, we've had a, just integers as parameters. This is an example of how we can do some more, some like slightly more complex operations, uh, which couldn't just be repeated on one line. And then we can also input something of a different data, data type, like an array, into our function. So the other thing to note is that we wrote this function right here before we executed it right here. So in Python, um, code is executed sequentially. So this line of code, and this kind of load code, and this kind of code, and this, this line of code, and this line, and this line, and so forth. So if we put our array right here, or our function right here, it wouldn't work because by the time we execute this line of code, we would not have created the array sum function. We're not creating the array sum function until later, so this wouldn't work. But if we do this, if we do this right here, we go back to the way it was, um, then our array sum function already exists and we can make use of it right down here. We can make use of it here because we've already created it beforehand right up here. So let's go ahead and let's print uh, the result and just see if this works. If not, we'll troubleshoot it. And that's just part of the process. Okay, cool, we got 161. I mean, I think that's the sum, that makes sense. Um, now, before we um, continue, or well, we're kind of getting to the end of the video right here. I just want to um, show you some vocabulary. Uh, so this right here is called, these are called function parameters, or parameters, or we can call them inputs as well. This line of code is called a function definition, so including the name and the parameters. This is called a return statement, and this is the return keyword. Um, so this process of doing return sum is called returning a value from a function. We're returning sum from this function, and when we do this, so when we type in add two integers, when we're using this function, the term for that is calling a function. So right here we can say we are calling the function add two integers with their parameters five and five. 
okay? And that's becoming num1 and num2, just to reiterate. So that was a brief introduction to functions. Um, I hope this has been of use to you. If you um, found value in this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Have a nice day.